BBC News with Kathy Cluxton. Egypt's state prosecutor has issued an arrest warrant for the leader of the Muslim Brotherhood, Mohammed Badia, and a number of other senior figures in the movement. They're accused of inciting violence near a military barracks in Cairo on Monday that left more than 50 people dead. A White House spokesman, when asked whether the U.S. was any closer to designating events there as a military coup, said it was evaluating how the Egyptian military responded to the situation. The head of the railway company, whose runaway train devastated part of the Canadian town of Lac Megantic, killing at least 15 people, has visited the crash site. Edward Burkhardt said he believed a train engineer had failed to properly reset the brakes after an earlier small fire on the train. A federal judge in the United States has found the electronics giant Apple guilty of conspiring to raise the price of electronic books. The judge said Apple started colluding with publishers in 2009 as the company prepared to launch its iPad tablet. A group of leading North American retail chains have announced a program to introduce stricter safety standards for garment workers in Bangladesh. The initiative follows the collapse of a clothing factory near Dhaka in April, which killed more than a thousand people. A bomb blast in Paga Karachi has killed President Asif Ali Zadari's personal security chief, Bilal Sheikh, and two other people. A senior police official said the blast shattered the bulletproof vehicle in which Mr. Sheikh was travelling. India's Supreme Court has ruled that lawmakers convicted of a serious crime will be thrown out of office in what's being seen as a landmark judgment. A campaign group called the ruling a significant step. And the head of the United Nations Refugee Agency, says plans by Kenya to return the more than one million Somali refugees on its soil should follow international standards. Mr. Guterres has cautioned that repatriation might destabilize Somalia if not handled properly. BBC News. This is World Business Report. Hello, I'm Mike Johnson. North American clothing firms reveal their plan to protect workers in Bangladesh. There's transparency. There's funding, there's investment, and this is a very determined effort to bring the power that we can provide to see lasting change occur. But are the likes of Gap and Walmart really doing enough to prevent a repeat of the Rana Plaza factory disaster? Also in this program, guilty, a U.S. judge rules that Apple conspired to rig the price of e-books. We'll be asking if the smartphone app really did change our lives. Or, as in the case of Angry Birds, just give us new ways to waste our time. And bringing it all back home, how jobs once exported to China are returning to the United States. We're here to celebrate the return of PC manufacturing back to the United States, and it's starting right here in the great state of North Carolina. We'd like your thoughts uh, on efforts by Western retailers to improve factory safety in Bangladesh, and maybe an app has made a difference to your life. Let us know on the BBC Business page on Facebook, and meanwhile on Twitter, you can find us at BBC Business. Well, when people in the Dakar suburb of Sabha first heard it, they thought it was an earthquake. Officials in Bangladesh say scores of people have been killed after an eight-story building collapsed near the capital, Dhaka. I can see army personnel rescue teams working frantically uh, through this together to pull out people from the debris. More than 1,100 people lost their lives when a Dakar factory building collapsed. In April, the disaster led to calls for a radical overhaul of safety standards in Bangladesh. On Monday, a global alliance led by mainly European empresas privadas, as pequenas e médias empresas. Apple plan. And we'll be hearing how the two schemes compare in just a moment. First of all, though, I asked the BBC's Mahfouz Sadiq in Dakar what's changed there since the disaster. The government here has definitely been trying to show that it is doing enough to improve workers' conditions. In the last two months, the government has increased the number of inspections at factories. Several factories have been shut down following cracks that have appeared in their walls. And at the same time, the number of inspections from the government bodies as well as engineers at the premier engineering university here has increased. But considering the scale of the industry here, the overall response is still inadequate, according to some of 